Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is Resurrection Sunday. Resurrection Sunday. I said Resurrection Sunday. Praise the Lord. I believe God has been doing wonderful things in our lives as we have been praying. And I believe that today is the day of celebration. As Jesus was on the cross on Friday, but there was a Sunday coming. And on Sunday morning, glory descended. And your glory has come. Your glory has come. Your glory has come. So this morning we are looking at your glory of resurrection has come. Your glory of resurrection has come. Your glory shall be seen. Your glory shall be seen. You know, the resurrection of Jesus is the most glorious event in human history. It is the most glorious event. People like Easter, I mean, people like Christmas, but Easter is the greatest day, greatest day in the kingdom of God. The day that Jesus prevailed over the grave and came out. The grave could not hold him. Lenin died and he was in the grave. Buddha died and they are still in the grave. And they are going every year and preserving their bones. And their worshippers go and worship their bones. But our God died and he rose again. Glory be to the Lord. Glory be to the Lord. That's why we Christians, we gather on Easter Sunday and we rejoice and celebrate. I'm going to read to you the factual account of the resurrection from Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28 from verse 1 through to verse 10. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. There was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing was white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. These were soldiers who were guarding the body of Christ, so that according to them, the disciples will not come and steal it. And yet, the time that they should be fighting against whatever it may be, he said that they were like dead men. They were afraid because the power of powers was being manifested. Verse 5, and the angel, of, and the angel answered and said to the women, do not be afraid. For I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen as he said. He is risen as he said. He predicted it. He talked about it before. And the day of the resurrection, he rose as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before them into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Verse 8 says, So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring the disciples' words. Verse 9. And as they went to tell the disciples, behold, Jesus himself met them, saying, Rejoice! So they came and held him at his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. You can see the factual account of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. The angel said, He is risen. He is alive. Go, you see him. And as they went, they saw him. They saw him. They met him. And then he said the same thing that the angels said to them. Be not afraid. He said, go and tell my brethren. I'll see them in Galilee. And he went and met them. And the rest is what we know about the great commission. He said, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. And he said, go and preach this gospel to every creature. 
Jesus is alive. Jesus rose from the grave. Death could not keep him. He is alive. And because he's alive, you are also alive. Because he rose, you also rise from whatever situation you are in. Because he ever lives, you also live forever. He said to Martha, he that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall she live. And he that believes in me and has not even died, he will never die. There are some seated here who may never die. Because the Antichrist may be revealed soon. The rapture may happen soon. Oh, I didn't hear another amen there now. People want to go to heaven, they don't want to die. Praise the Lord. So on the Friday, they battered him. They beat him. They oppressed him. They did all kinds of things, injuries to him. They mocked him. And in the end, he gave out the ghost on the Friday. They put him in the grave. They sealed it with a big stone. They used cement or maybe bitumen or whatever they may be, they would maybe, to seal the grave to make sure that he doesn't come out. And they also stationed great military um, surveillance around the place. 24 hour surveillance was on him and they were watching and watching and watching and yet with all the human the best human wisdom the best military intelligence the best, best military uh, security yet jesus rose from the grave he came out and they knew he was going they knew the moment because there was an earthquake they were afraid they could not do anything you know what happened they went back to tell their people and they said we are going to offer you money so that he can frame a story that his disciples came and stole him. The disciples without any guns, without any ammunition, they came and rolled away the stone, and then they stole him, and the guards were there. A story that cannot be believed, but that's the story that their human intelligence was telling them. The Bible said if they had even known the wisdom of God, they would not have crucified him. But because God made them stupid, and they did not understand, when he was saying, Eli, Eli, they said he's calling Elisha. Let Elisha come and help him. God confused them. He confused them. And that's why the Lord is confusing your enemies. That when you cry unto God, you are speaking in tongues, they get confused. They don't know what you are talking about. And all these 21 days that you have been crying out unto God, it's not been in vain. Today is resurrection day. Today you see the manifestations. As you look into your life, you see that the things that you are praying for, they have been taken care of. I'm believing God that there have been some testimonies. Many things have happened. And today is the day of those manifestations. So what is the meaning of the resurrection? Very quickly, three things so that we pray. I know my time is very close. So three things. Number one is that nothing is impossible with God. Nothing. Nothing is impossible with God. And everything is possible with God. The resurrection tells us that with God, nothing is impossible. There's a lady in my office who always says, there's, um, what God cannot do does not exist. I know you will call it for me. Because I know you are all there. That what God cannot do does not exist. So no matter what your situation is, it may be a terrifying situation. Men may give you a report, especially when it's sickness. The doctors know how to give us reports. And they'll even specify and say, now you have so so number of days to live. This is how you are going to be for the rest of your life. This is how things are going to be. And some of us have believed the report of the doctors. But the, 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 the report of the scripture is in Luke chapter 1 verse 37. That with God, nothing is impossible. With God, absolutely nothing is impossible. I don't know how, I don't know how long your situation may have been. But there's a solution to that problem. If that problem is laid to God, and I believe that you have been laying those problems to God in the fasting and prayer, solution is coming. If solution has not manifested, solution will manifest. Solution will manifest. You know, Jesus, I said earlier on, Jesus said to Martha, Martha's brother Lazarus died. They sent word to him, and Jesus still delayed, and said that sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. Eventually, he showed up at a place, and when he showed up, man had been in the grave four days. And when Jesus said, your brother shall live again, 
mother said, mm, Lord, by now he is thinking. What he says that is impossible. It's over. Are you saying it's over about your situation? It's never over. It's never over. Some people is married that is delaying and you think it's over. It's not over. You are waiting for a situation and you think that it's over. It's not over. Martha said, it's over. And Jesus said, Jesus said, look, did I not tell you that if you would believe God, you will see the glory of God? If you would believe, you will see the glory of God. The only thing you need to is to believe. What did Martha need to do? Just to believe. Then Jesus went to the grave and the stone was there, just like on the day of resurrection. But he said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection. When I speak to you, any dead thing, it will arise. Any dead thing. And any dead thing in your life can arise today. Any dead dream can arrive today. Any dead hope can arrive today. Any dead marriage can arrive today. Any dead relationship can revive today. Any dead condition, any dead organ can arise today. They may say you can never have children again, but you can have children. That same womb can bring about children. That man that they say your, 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 your count is very low, that can increase. I'm believing God that impotency will be a thing of history in your life. Impotency will become a thing of your life, a history of your life in the name of Jesus. Today, captivities are going to end in Jesus' name. As we go through today, I'm believing God that mighty things are going to happen. Every sickness, depression, and whatever it may be, it is ending today because Jesus is bringing them out of the grave. So Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible says, Lazarus walked. He walked. And when I stood at the grave, at the, the door of the, the tomb, and he said, loose him and let him go. And Lazarus was living. People were going, Lazarus was like, was like they put somebody in a museum and people are going to see him. People go and see Lazarus because they've never seen him like that before. Somebody dead for four days is raised and he's coming out, he's no longer stinking. And he lives and lives another life. And your stinking situation is going to change. I say your stinking situation is going to change. Your stinking situation is going to change. But only believe Jesus as Jesus said to matter. If you believe, it will be a change situation. I want you to pray one prayer before we go to number one, number two point. Pray and say, Oh Lord, Oh Lord, Oh Lord, I'm coming out. I'm coming out today of this situation, of this, from this grave. I come out. I come out from this captivity in the name of Jesus. From this, you know what your Lazarus is. You know what your Lazarus is, and I want to declare. Call that your Lazarus out and say, I'm coming out in the name of Jesus. Lazarus came out and you, you, you will come out. Are you praying? Are you praying? You, meet, you need to make a declaration and declare, I am coming out today. Today is resurrection day and I come out. I come out of that grave. I come out of that situation. I come out of that depression. I come out of that sickness. I come out of that captivity in the name of Jesus. I come out of death. Death which is designed to kill me. I come out of that pit. The pit of hell. I come out in the name of Jesus. I come out. I come out. I come out. I come out in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Number two, I said there are three glorious things we want to look at. The meaning for, of Asa to us. The meaning of the resurrection to us. Number one is that with God, nothing is impossible. No matter the situation, no matter the condition, it is possible. There's a solution in the hands of God. Number two, our pains, our sufferings in Christ, they will end. Whatever you are going through, whatever your crisis, there is an end to it. And it will end to the glory of God. You see, when they, when they crucified Jesus and put it in the grave and sealed it and put security around it, they thought nothing else would happen. We finished it. They thought they finished it. But that wasn't the end. That wasn't the end. Jesus' suffering was not in vain. So you may be going through your Friday now. Your Friday of torture. Your Friday of beating. Your Friday of, 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 of mocking. They mocked him. And you may be going through that Friday. Or you may be on your Saturday of silence. He lay in the grave silent on, on, the, on the Saturday. Suspense. 
waiting. It may be a waiting time right now. But your Sunday is coming. The Sunday morning is coming. The Sunday morning is coming. The Sunday morning is coming. On that Sunday morning, by the dawning of the day, the two women were going to the grave. They said they wanted to go and see the tomb. Oh, people may come to see you. They are coming to visit you about your crisis and they come and hear your testimony. People who know you about some condition, they only see you, you are going to be a new person. They didn't know that Jesus was resurrected and had a new body, a resurrected body, and he was out of the grave walking around. The grave was empty. You will find your pit empty. Your pit will be empty. Your grave will be empty. The place they buried will be empty. Where they are hiding will be empty when they turn up. But that's because you believe in the resurrection. He said, if you believe God, if you believe God, because I am the resurrection, he said, you will see the glory of God. And the glory of God is coming to you. Because you will not remain in that pit. Proverbs says, surely there is an end. Surely there is an end. And your expectation shall not be cut off. Surely. Somebody say surely. Surely. There is an end to my situation. There is an end to my suffering. There is my end to my captivity. There is my end oh, to my challenges. A day of deliverance is coming. And it is today. It is today. Easter commemorates the day of your deliverance. And you can be out of that grave today. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Number three one is Christ's victory in his resurrection is our victory too. Christ's victory in the resurrection. The Bible says he's the first fruit of the resurrection. Nobody has ever resurrected. And nobody has yet resurrected. Nobody has ever and nobody has yet. Only Christ. Lazarus was not resurrected. He was raised from the dead. He lived again and then he still died. Jesus was resurrected. He's not going to die again. That's resurrection. Raising from the dead is different from resurrection. Amen? And Jesus is the only one who has been resurrected. Who died and rose again from the dead and is living until this day. Will not die again. And Jesus said, if the spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, hey, the spirit of the power that, that raised Jesus Christ dwells in you, he that raised Jesus shall also raise you up. He shall also quicken your mortal body. He shall also give life to your mortal body. He will give life to your mortal body. You are meant to be a partaker of the resurrection. You know what Paul said? That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. That I may know him. He said, my focus is that I will know him. Is that your focus? To know Christ and his resurrection. And that when I taste that resurrection power, and my prayer is that on the day of resurrection, I'll be able to attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Is that what you're looking forward to? That the day of resurrection is the rapture. The first resurrection will be the rapture. And then after that, there's a second trip coming. You want the first trip or the second trip? I'm asking you a question. You want first class or you want second class? First class is the rapture. Believers who are dead or sleeping, the Bible calls it, and believers who are alive shall be caught up together. The Bible says it's a mystery. So we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed. We shall all be changed. In the twinkling of an eye, as you close your eye and open, there's a change. And those who are alive will be resurrected. Those who are dead will be resurrected. And we shall be caught up together with the Lord in the air. That's the day you are looking forward to. That's the day I'm looking forward to. And we shall meet in the air. We shall meet in the air. And those who are careless will be left behind. And they're waiting for the second bus. Second bus. Through the tribulation. You will not be part of it. You will not be part of it. But I want to tell you that the power that is in Christ Jesus, the power that raised him, is inside of you. For one purpose, to quicken you, 
to give you life so that there will be no death in you. So that there's no sickness that can kill you. There's no destruction that can destroy you. Because the power that raised Jesus is dwelling in you right now. It's dwelling in you right now. It is dwelling in you right now. It is dwelling in you right now. To do one thing, to quicken you. To give you life. To give you strength. So that you will not be weak. You will not, be di- you will not die. You will not perish. Sin will not have dominion over you. Satan will not have dominion over you. Principalities will not have dominion over you. He says, we are more than conquerors. So we have to go through all these things. Yet, we are more than conquerors. I want you to pray. Pray with this last prayer. I say, Lord, the spirit that dwells in me, by the power that dwells in me, by the power that dwells in me, I decree over everything, everything that's rising up against me. Pray that everything, every opposition to my life, every adversity to my life, every destruction aimed at my life, against them, in the name of Jesus, destroy them, destroy them, destroy them. Are you praying? Destroy them, destroy them. Today is my resurrection day. 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 I shall not die. I shall not perish in that situation. I will not perish because the power that dwells in me, he that's in me, is greater than he that's in the world. I am more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror because of the spirit of him that dwells in me who is working fervently for me. He is working 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 for me. I am more than a conqueror. Make it a declaration. I am more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. I trample over everything. Every principality. Every power. Everything that is right up against me. I trample over them. I raise dominion. I take dominion. I take dominion. I take dominion over them right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I rejoice. I rejoice because I'm a champion. I rejoice because I'm a conqueror. I rejoice because I'm, I'm a conqueror. I'm a, I'm overcomer. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Today's day of rejoicing. Rejoicing over my victory. Rejoicing over my conquering. You rejoicing over my enemies. In the mighty name of Jesus. So magnify the Lord and my spirit praise his name for the death could not hold him captive even in the grave Jesus is Lord, even Jesus is Lord.